and welcome to Biostock. Today we are joined by Dr. Hoffman, who are presenting the first results from Coordate's migraine study. So welcome, Dr. Hoffman. Hello, thank you. And you're currently at a migraine symposium in London. Could you tell us a bit more about this event? Yeah, the migraine international uh, symposium is a a meeting that uh, one of the biggest headache meetings that we have in Europe. It runs every second year, exactly in the year where we do not have an international headache society meeting, so that it's the opportunity where the other, the, the, the entire headache community worldwide comes together and discusses their new findings, results, and both from a preclinical or basic science aspect as well as clinical trials uh, that have been conducted. And you're presenting results from Coordate's uh, migraine study. Could you tell us a bit more about these results? Yes, I'm presenting um, the data from a subgroup of uh, a larger trial with a kinetic oscillation stimulation device. Um, the, the subgroup analysis that we present here is um, of the uh, German study population, 92 patients, um, and uh, where we already have the um, results for that subgroup. Mm, the trial was was conducted uh, um, in, both in Germany, as the, and the second part is in, in, in Finland. That's data that is not presented today. And uh, essentially, the kinetic oscillation stimulation works in a way that you stimulate the nasal cavity for 10 minutes on each side and once per week. And the trial was designed in a way that you have two groups, half of the patients got the stimulation and the other half got um, a sham stimulation. So essentially they had inserted the stimulation device or the catheter, but it's stimulated with different parameters with which we think um, that it does not have any effect. And uh, we compared a four week baseline period where we recorded the, the initial headache frequency and compared it to a uh, six week treatment. Um, in reality, the six week treatment was separated into a two week run in phase, which did not went into analysis and a four week uh, assessment period. And then on top, there was as a secondary endpoint a four week follow up period. And are you able to say anything about the likelihood of reaching the primary endpoint in the final results? Well, the, the trial showed that compared to the sham simulation, um, you have a reduction of more or less 2.5 uh, headache days. Uh, that is quite standard to what you have uh, in, in a lot of migraine preventive trials, because it is the average essentially of those who do respond and those who do not respond. So if you do respond to the treatment, the likelihood that you would have a better response than these 2.5 days um, is, is, is very high. Now, as you say, we have to be aware that this is a subgroup analysis. So it's not powered for those um, 92 patients. It's powered for the entire study cohort. Um, but looking at the results, which, as I said, is pretty much in line of what we have with other substances, looking at the statistical significance, the p-value, um, you can never say with certainty if, if, if it will be or if it will not be uh, significant in the final trial. But the Finnish patient cohort would have to have a completely different result than the German cohort um, to make this again insignificant. And it's hard to conceive. It, it seems very unlikely that this will turn around. Um, but as I said, you, with, with absolute certainty, you cannot say at this point. And is there something that needs to be further evaluated? There always is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, one thing is that we that, that, that the trial now showed if it's efficacy and safety. Um, but uh, obviously, as a as a as a clinician, you would like to say, or would like to see which patient groups are the ones who who would benefit most of it. So, for example, you could imagine what if patients are refractory to other therapies. Uh, if you try your usual migraine preventives and they don't work, is then this the adequate uh, way to help these patients? So you could conceive a lot of, of, of studies to, to, to further dissect the effect, but the most, the, the essential one is to show the efficacy as such. And this is what has been done in this trial. 
And finally, what does these results mean for patients with chronic migraine? I think for patients, it does make a big difference. Uh, the reason is that we do have a lot of preventives, but they all, it, it's by far not a solution because first of all, we usually have response rates somewhere between 50 and 60 something percent. So a significant number of patients do not respond. Then um, uh, we have a second problem, which is that they have a lot of side effects, uh, systemic medications. If you use antidepressants, if you use uh, anticonvulsants, uh, they, they usually have weight gain. You have tiredness, concentration difficulties. Uh, you can get depressed with some of them. So these are side effects that can affect the quality of life of patients significantly. And uh, the attractiveness of this treatment is that it's essentially a local treatment in the nasal cavity that then has a effect on on a systemic effect if you want to say so on the on on, on the migraine frequency but um you do not expect any systemic side effects like like uh like depression or weight gain or the typical things that you see with others um and we we, we didn't see them in the in the trial so i think for migraine patients it's and for us as clinicians it's a it's a valuable addition because you you can imagine subgroups of migraineurs where you think they do not want to try something else because of their past experience or they have contraindications um and then this would be an attractive non-pharmacological approach that from what it looks like in the subgroup analysis could have a similar efficacy as some of the uh, pharmacological approaches Interesting, and thank you for joining us today, and uh, good luck at the event. Yeah, thank you very much.